the News Channel 5 Network. This is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. As we move towards the midterm elections and beyond, today on Inside Politics, we want to talk about crossing the aisle. Crossing the aisle is a political term as lawmakers work with other elected officials from the other party to seek solutions and to get problems or challenges accomplished. Are such politics becoming extinct, though? Does Tennessee have a history that might indicate that crossing the aisle has and can still work? Author and USA Today columnist Keel Hunt is our guest today on Inside Politics. He's going to discuss those kind of topics and a new book that he's written about it. Keel, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Pat. Good now, to be here. The full title of your book is Crossing the Aisle, How Bipartisanship Brought Tennessee into the 21st Century and Could Save America. That's a pretty big mouthful, but you cover a lot of years in politics in this state. As a reader approaches your book and picks it up, what should they take alone from the title to start out? When it, what should they be thinking when they get into the book? Uh, well, I think first of all, Pat, uh, it's important to realize that the stories in this book uh, happened um, not so long ago. This was, this was um, uh, in the decade of, decades of the 80s and 90s, uh, which was, uh, I call it the in-between time. It was after, uh, it was just after Tennessee had been such a, a blue state, uh, Democrat majority state for a hundred years. Uh, but before we became uh, like we are now in terms of uh, uh, Republican supermajority in our legislature and our congressional delegation and so forth. And that during that period, uh, very senior political leaders um, um, were able to uh, work across the aisle with um, uh, elected officials of the other party and get things done. So in the 80s and 90s, as we look back now, we know a lot of important things happened in terms of policy, uh, uh, new, new jobs, and so forth. And, and um, I thought those were important stories to capture, particularly in, in, in this current uh, uh, political environment nationally as well as across our state. And, and, it, and, and currently we live in a pretty angry uh, age. I, I just wanted people to know that not so long ago there was a better way. And that might provide some lessons for the current day. You don't go back through it, but your, this book in some ways is a sequel to the first book you did, Coup, which was the early ouster of Governor Ray Blanton, a Democrat. Um, in 1979. To, to install Lamar Alexander as governor early in January of 1979. All the leadership that helped install him early was Democrats. Right. Did that happen so uniquely in Tennessee, because it's never happened almost anywhere else in the country, Th because never, of the personalities involved, or was it something about the Tennessee political system that made it possible? Well, I think both. I think the, the, the personalities involved, uh, uh, Speaker Ned McWhorter, Lieutenant Governor John Wilder, the State Attorney General Bill Leach, uh, Hal Hardin, the U.S. Attorney, as well as uh, Lamar Alexander, who was the governor-elect that, on that day, uh, had come from our political system. And, and in Tennessee, uh, the important thing, in my opinion, to know about our state, uh, and especially during that period, was that our, our statewide elected officials um, have come from a, a, a moderate uh, center-right uh, political tradition. Um, we see so much going on in Washington these days where it seems the game is played in the end zones. These were people who had come from a tradition um, uh, of, of, of playing the game uh, between the 40-yard lines. And, and so they were able to, first of all, develop uh, uh, some mutual respect and trust on that crazy day of that crisis uh, w that we call the coup. And it had never happened before anywhere in our country and certainly hasn't happened since. Now you talk about the fact that today we're much dominant by the Republican Party as we used to be by the Democrats and in a lot of ways the, the, the examples and things you talk about in the book happened during that period. So why can't the Republicans say, well, it wasn't bipartisanship, it was the Republican Party emerging that had all these good things happen in Tennessee? Well, they could and some do, of course, um, it, 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 you know, it, even so. But the fact is, uh, I mean, one, one fact is that uh, over these past, uh, f starting in 1970, actually, when uh, Governor Winfield Dunn, a Republican from Memphis, was elected, kind of shocking everybody. The first uh, Republican in 50 years. In, in, in the political chair. establishment, the uh, first governor uh, Republican in, the, uh, in 50 years, that's right. Uh, well, ever since then, there's been an alternation uh, uh, of governors being of one party or the other. I mean, it hasn't been a supermajority for 50 years. It's been, uh, it's, it's been a, um, uh, 
you know, a succession of Republican governors and Democrat governors who've, who've alternated up to the present day. I mean, through, um, through um, Governor Bill Haslam. Now we now have a new governor's race that will be that will wind up in four days from tonight, and we'll see what happens. But but during this period that we're talking about, um, there there was, there was a lot of uh, bipartisanship, and I think that provides some very timely lessons for a lot of people in government now. I think the most important thing really is not for all the attention it gets is not so much elections, but what happens between elections. How does crossing the aisle begin? Do you have to be born to do it? Do you have to be raised that way politically? Or can there be a conversion? And can the public help make that conversion happen? Well, the public certainly can, and, and I, I feel has. The, the, the title Crossing the Aisle, Pat, actually has two or three different meanings that are all pertinent to this period in our recent history. Um, one is the, the capacity of senior leaders to work across the aisle on good policy, uh, but another was during the, particularly during this period, uh, you had a lot of uh, traditional, uh, generational uh, Democrats uh, in here in Middle Tennessee uh, and in West Tennessee who became Republicans. Now that had a lot to do with some national uh, issues, um, you know, ranging from uh, the war in Vietnam and reaction to it to the to uh, the school desegregation and other uh, forms of desegregation and the reaction to that, uh, whatever, the, a lot of people became um, new Republicans and, and they now had the um, the zeal of the converted. And so that provided a new dynamic in the political system and helped bring about Republican majorities in our legislature and so forth. How do you get away from the idea that politics today is seen more and more as a zero-sum game? My group wins, my tribe wins, your tribe loses, because crossing the aisle doesn't work if you look at politics that way. No, no, no. Uh, it, it does not, and we have seen that it does not. Um, I do think, though, it's important to, you know, for one of us to point out that there are uh, important um, exceptions, I would call them, uh, both in, in, in our f federal government and Congress, um, and in our state legislature where, you know, uh, good and important policies are being made in spite of all the anger, in spite of all the rancor across uh, the country. There have been some recent examples. The uh, one highly relevant to Nashville was the uh, Music Modernization Act, which had bipartisan support because you had uh, co-sponsors uh, of both parties uh, in Congress able to work together. So we still see it. We just don't hear much about it. Kill Hunt's our guest. He's the he's, he's former editor at the Tennessee, and he's a columnist there. He's written a new book called Crossing the Aisle about politics and politicians working across the aisle across parties to get things done. Back to continue our conversation with Keel after this break.